browsing through the Reader's Digest recently, I noticed a little humorous story which ran as follows. I was spending a few weeks with my daughter and she was expecting her third baby. On the second day of the visit, I collected Matthew, aged five, from school. He said, Granny, I didn't think you would still be here. Oh yes, I said, I'm still here. Well, replied Matthew, I've been learning all about God. When people get old, he asks, he takes them. Then, looking up at me with a puzzled expression, he added, He must have forgotten about you. Well, Easter means that he hasn't forgotten about us. St. Augustine said in the 5th century, We are Easter people and Alleluia is our song. The Bible tells us that Mary Magdalene and the other women came to the tomb at sunrise. So just like the sun rising in the morning dispels the darkness of the night, so Christ rising from the dead dispels the darkness of sin and death. Through baptism we share in his triumph over these negative realities. The resurrection means that Christ has invested the reality of natural death with new meaning. In his letter to the Romans, St. Paul asks the question, Death, where is your victory? Resurrection, as we know, is the central teaching of our Christian faith and it is up to us to uphold and defend it before non-believers. For me, it's easier to believe in the resurrection than not to. Even science tells us that nothing in nature, not even the tiniest particle, can disappear without a trace. Nature does not know extinction. All it knows is transformation. At this time of the year also, we see the natural world awaking to new life. But since we humans are the cream of God's creation, from a rational point of view, it wouldn't make sense if death signaled the end of our existence. Life would be utterly meaningless if what followed was an eternity of nothingness. But life itself would also be empty if it, if it was devoid of love. Love has an eternal ring about it. It is our origin. It's our constant calling in life. And of course it's our fulfilment in heaven. Eternal life starts here. In heaven, there is a never-ending exchange of life and love between the divine persons and God desires that we be part of that exchange. But it must begin in the here and now if we're ever hoping to come to possess it eternally. It's not an abstract truth. For instance, whenever we have our love rejected and we love again, that's resurrection. Whenever we pick up the pieces of a fractured relationship and with God's grace begin again, that's resurrection. Whenever we bury the hatchet and forgive people against all the odds, that's resurrection. But it doesn't come on the cheap. It involves a constant dying to self, without which resurrection in the here and now and also in the hereafter is but a pipe dream. Today we celebrate the Lord's Passover from death to life. We joined him in that crossing over at our baptism and the sprinkling of holy water later on will bring this home to us. Thank you for watching and God bless you all this wonderful Easter.